Hello Kim One. Today we're going to take a look at some physical properties of solutions as we continue to add more and more solute. These are called colligative properties. Let's get started. As you add solute to any solvent, it's going to start to change the physical properties of that solution. What the solute is doesn't really matter, but the more and more solute you add, usually the effective change of that physical property changes more and more. You can see down here in the bottom right corner of this slide some of the physical properties that will change when you add a solute, like boiling point, freezing point, the vapor pressure, and the osmotic pressure. In order to talk about colligative properties, let's spend a few moments talking about electrolytes. When you think of electrolytes, you might think of things like Gatorade that replace the electrolytes in your blood when you sweat a lot so that your muscles don't start to cramp. Those electrolytes are needed there to, in order to help your muscles fire and keep them working. Strong electrolytes dissolve and dissociate completely, meaning that when we put them in solution, they will disassociate into their positive and negative cations. These strong electrolytes are in three different categories, all ionic compounds, the strong acids, and the strong bases. We'll talk a little more about acids and bases as we move along in Unit 13. A weak electrolyte is something that when dissolved, it only partially disassociates. So when they're dissolved, some of them might break apart into ions, but a lot of them will stay together as molecules. Because of this, they will only form partially conductive solutions. Weak acids, weak bases, they partially disassociate and usually form weak electrolytes. Any acid that's not one of the seven strong acids and any base that's not one of the eight strong bases would be considered a weak acid or weak base. Finally, a non-electrolyte is something that does not disassociate at all. These molecules would remain intact and therefore they would form non-conductive solutions. Most molecules or things that are covalently bonded are going to form non-electrolytes. Other things like alcohols and sugars also will not disassociate, they'll dissolve, they just won't disassociate in solution and therefore would form non-electrolytes. So we look at these six here examples, HBr is one of the seven. So this would be a strong electrolyte because it's a strong acid. Ethanol is an alcohol, you can tell because of the OL ending and because of that it's going to be a non-electrolyte and not disassociate at all. H2CO3, carbonic acid, is an acid, but it's not one of the seven strong acids. So this would be considered a weak electrolyte. NGBr2 is an ionic compound because we have a metal cation and a non-metal anion, and that would make this a strong electrolyte. Calcium hydroxide is also ionic, so therefore it would be strong. And then finally we have a sugar. A sugar will not disassociate in water, and therefore that would be a non-electrolyte. So you might be asking yourself, why do we need to go through those electrolytes, weak electrolytes, and non-electrolytes in order to understand colligative properties? Well, because the more particles of solute that's dissolved or disassociated in solution, the more effect we'll have. So the first colligative property here is called boiling point elevation. This is when you add more solute and the boiling point will actually rise of the solvent. So for instance, if water typically boils at 100 degrees Celsius, if we add salt to that water, it will actually raise the boiling point of the solution. There's actually a calculation we can do in order to figure out how much it will rise the boiling point. If you look down here, delta TB is the change in boiling point. We have KB, we have a constant of 0.52 degrees Celsius per molal solution. This M is a small m for molality, and then I, this is number of particles. This is why you're going to be able to need to look at a substance and figure out how many particles it will disassociate into. So let's take a look at a problem here. This is what is the boiling point of a 2.5 molal solution of methyl alcohol? Methyl alcohol is CH3OH. So the first thing we're going to do is delta T change in boiling point equals KB. We know this is going to be 0.52. It is a constant. The molal solution is 0.25 and then we need to multiply by I. I in this case is how many particles this substance will disassociate into. We know alcohols are non-electrolytes and do not disassociate. Therefore this will only be one particle because every methyl alcohol is going to stay together as one thing. 
So when we calculate our answer, that tells us that this is going to elevate the boiling point 1.3 degrees. So if the normal boiling point is 100 and it elevates 1.3 degrees, that would give us a new boiling point of 101.3 degrees Celsius. Always remember to add the boiling point elevation equation answer to the boiling point of water, which is 100. Here's another example that's very similar. But notice, in this case, we have sodium chloride, NaCl. When this substance is dissolved, it's going to disassociate into the sodium cation and the chlorine anion. Therefore, that's two particles. So the equation for this is the exact same, but instead of a 1 in this position, now we have a 2 because we have the sodium and chlorine for every particle that dissolves. And notice that it changes the boiling point elevation by a factor of 2, and therefore it'll rise the boiling point 2.6 degrees Celsius. Another thing that a solute will do to a solution is reduce the freezing point. We call this freezing point depression. This equation is the exact same as boiling point elevation, but we're going to lower the freezing point rather than rise it. We have a new constant, which is 1.86, but we're still dealing with molality, and we still need to know the number of particles that this substance is going to produce. So this says, what is the freezing point of three molar solution of methyl alcohol in water? So you'll see that we have 1.86, we have our 3.0 molal solution, and methyl alcohol does not disassociate, so that's only one particle. We get an answer of 5.6 degrees. What does that mean? That means the freezing point will be depressed 5.6 degrees. The normal freezing point of water is 0 degrees Celsius. So we have to subtract that 5.6 from 0 because that's how much it's depressing. So the new freezing point is negative 5.6 degrees Celsius. It's really important that you keep boiling point elevation and freezing point depression separate. With boiling point, you're adding to 100, and with freezing point, you're subtracting from zero. Here's another example with calcium chloride. It's important to write the formula. Calcium chloride is CaCl2. This is going to be three particles, one calcium and two chlorine. So we write out our equation. Notice we put a 3 here because of the three particles calcium chloride is going to produce. And that's going to reduce our boiling point 17 degrees all the way down to negative 17. There are other colligative properties. Vapor pressure is changed by the amount of solute and osmotic pressure is changed by the amount of solute. But both of those will be dealt with in an AP chem course. For this course, all you have to do is know how to make the calculations for boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. Take the time to look at the activity and work through the problems, and let me know if you have any questions. We'll see you soon.